Hey everybody, it's Brian with Retired at 40. Welcome back to the kitchen. Today is a much anticipated, this has been a, a very requested video and it's quickly becoming one of our favorite things for a couple different reasons. We made our first round of this about a week ago and we really just discovered that there's so many options that we better make a video and because my wife has been requesting me to make this video for a while. And I can't get her to be on a video yet because she's still a little camera shy, but she has been known to uh, make an appearance on the Facebook group every once in a while. Today we're making our new favorite and soon to be your new favorite, freeze-dried cereal bars. <laughs> Today's video is pretty self-explanatory, but I'm going to give you some of what we have succeeded with, and then I'm gonna try a couple new things, maybe give you a few ideas so when you make your own, uh, you'll kinda of know what you wanna do. So for cereal bars, we like to break it down into basically three separate ingredients. You've got cereal, of course, which is going to freeze dry very well. It's already dry. Uh, the ingredients in it, we all know that they will freeze dry well already. The second is going to be milk, uh, whether it's cow's milk, goat's milk, um, almond milk, coconut milk, uh, we all know that those freeze dry very well also. And then your third is gonna be your additives, which kinda just give, a, give your cereal bars just a little extra kick. So today we're gonna do blueberries, we're gonna do strawberries, bananas, you can add some flaxseed. We're gonna try some raisins today, which I've never done before. And then I think I've finally found the solution to peanut butter because you can't put peanut butter in the freeze dryer. It does not do well, it's too oily. But somehow the folks at PB2 make this powdered peanut butter where it's, uh, it's very similar to, uh, they may, maybe they freeze dry it, maybe they just freeze dry it in a different way. But somehow you can just add water and get peanut butter. So I'm thinking if you add this to a liquid and then freeze it onto the cereal bars, hopefully we can get the peanut butter flavor that we've been trying to get in the freeze dryer community um, without having a giant mess or a flop. Another thing you can try is just a protein powder and add, add some water to this, make your protein mix, and then uh, pour that on the cereal. There are so many options that you can do with this and you can make it as healthy or uh, as not healthy as you want to. It can be from something quick that you grab in the morning for breakfast that's healthy, that gives you a good start for the day, or you can even use it for a kid's snack or a dessert. Our four cereal choices today are gonna be Fruity Pebbles, or the generic version, which is called Fruity Bites. I'm gonna do a healthier version that's a Kellogg Special K, the fruit and yogurt type. Then we're gonna do the good old Honey Nut Cheerios. And then for a super sweet treat, we're gonna do some Cinnamon Toast Crunch. No box, sorry. We're gonna do four trays total today, and since I got the second freeze dryer, the, both of the freeze dryers have been running nonstop. Uh, we're fully committed at this point. So we're just doing four because that's all we have room for today. But on the, on the first tray, I'm gonna do Honey Nut Cheerios. And you can get these pretty full. On the Cheerios, we're gonna do chocolate milk. So I've still got about a half an inch at the bottom of the tray. But once you have all your ingredients, you can pretty much fill the whole tray up to the top of the tray. So I'm gonna do half of this tray with strawberry. So we're gonna have a chocolate strawberry Cheerios bar. The milk is just kinda gonna hold everything together, but you want you want to kinda mix the ingredients down into uh, this conglomeration just so it all holds it all together. And then on the other half, I'm gonna do bananas. So we're gonna have chocolate banana Cheerio bars. So you really wanna try and get the fruit down to the bottom of the tray and that way when it freeze dries, it's gonna hold all this together. Otherwise, your strawberries or your bananas or blueberries or whatever you're using, they're gonna wanna just, they'll separate from the bar when it's all freeze dried. Our next tray, we're gonna do a little healthier version of the cereal bar. And this one, I think I'm actually gonna put the fruit maybe at the bottom and then I'll cover it with cereal. And then we'll do our milk last. So I think that after doing that first one, I think instead of trying to sink all the fruit down, just do it this way. Then you can put the fruit, you can kind of evenly distribute it through the tray because everything at the bottom is gonna hold together the best. Yep, that's definitely the best way to do it. 
And then this one, we're gonna add a little flaxseed on here also. We're gonna go with a, an almond milk. This is making me hungry for a bowl of cereal. I almost forgot my raisins. I think what's really important with the cereal and especially anything that's kind of flaky style is you want to make sure that there's milk covering all of it because anything that's loose on the top here is going to not, it's not gonna freeze dry as a whole. It's just gonna wanna fall off after it's freeze dried. So make sure that your milk is kind of like your glue, I guess. So that's gonna hold everything together. So make sure everything's got a good coating and don't worry too much about making it soggy because once it's freeze dried, obviously it's not gonna be soggy again, but you don't wanna kind of change the, the overall texture of it. So you don't want it to be so soggy that it's just gonna turn into mush. Last two trays, we're not gonna have any ingredients other than the PB2 because I'm gonna do peanut butter cinnamon toast crunch. So I'm just gonna take my PB2 and just kind of drizzle it over here in hopes that once we add the milk, that will kind of solidify everything together and hopefully give us our solution to the peanut butter problem, at least in cereal form. See if we can get that PB2 to mix in. And then on the last one, we're gonna do our fruity pebbles or generic fruity bites. So one of the reasons that I didn't wanna do anything other than just milk on the Fruity Pebbles and on the Cinnamon Toast Crunch is it, they're so sweet by themselves that just plain milk is, is gonna make it plenty sweet. This will be almost like a dessert bar. All right, that's all done. And the PB2 actually, it did really well. It mixed in really well. Hopefully we can get it frozen before it turns into peanut butter. Let's go take it to the freeze dryer. So I'm gonna load the freeze dryer and kind of talk about some new things at the same time. Um, the first thing being that there's a lot of people that have not wanted to join the Facebook group because of, because it's Facebook. Um, so I've actually started a MeWe group. If you've never heard of MeWe, um, it's more or less the anti-Facebook. There's no ads, there's no spyware. Um, a lot of the same functions. I'll keep both the groups open. And there's quite a few people that have already uh, joined the MeWe group, so it's growing very fast. So the MeWe group name is just Retired at 40, Freeze Drying Group. And then I'll go ahead and put a link down in the description so you can uh, click on that too, and it'll take you right to the site and you can sign up easy. Uh, the Facebook group is still open. Same thing, Retired at 40's Freeze Drying Group. We've got some real big news that's happening and those two groups are always gonna get uh, the information first. And I'll see you in a bit right after you hit subscribe and click the bell to get notifications. All right, I hear the freeze dryer beeping. Let's check on it. Well, it says it's 20 hours and 34 minutes. One thing that I like about this new software is it actually stops the time, even if you go a little bit over. This has been done for, I don't know, five or six minutes now, but it stops the time when the, when the process is complete. So the best way to check and see if this is done is just bust a big part of it off like this and then feel your center because that center part is always going to be the part that does not get done if, if any. Looks like our Cheerios are good to go. And one thing that I'm really liking is that it's not sticking at all to the pans. It just gives you this whole big thing. So if you want to dice them up into bars, um, that just makes it that much easier. So the two that I'm most worried about the peanut butter cinnamon toast crunch and the fruity pebbles Because their sugar content is quite a bit higher than the others. So let's take these upstairs and look at them I'm gonna cut these down the center and I'm gonna see if I can just cut them into bars right now But it looks like we're in the clear with the fruity pebbles. They uh, they do really nice the little flakes do uh, they're they're pretty fragile so I don't think that they would I think if you had them in a mylar or something, they would probably end up falling apart. Unless you just really treated them gentle. Let's try this peanut butter cinnamon toast crunch next. So the cinnamon toast crunch with the PB2 in it, um, it's actually, it's falling apart quite a bit more, which is fine if you were going to reconstitute it as a cereal. But if you're trying to use it as a bar, uh, it probably is not really gonna work as much, but it, it does stay in, in pretty good sized chunks. I'm not sure if that's because of the cinnamon toast crunch, 
or if that's because of the PB2. But on the plus side of that, the PB2, it did freeze dry. So that solves the peanut butter problem. That kind of makes me want to just make some PB2 by itself and try and freeze dry it just so we can see if we can freeze dry peanut butter finally. And even though the PB2 is already a powdered substance, um, it would solve the problem of being able to do peanut butter in other recipes. All right, so we'll do our special K. This has all of our other added ingredients in it. It seems like they are, they're staying in bars pretty well. And now you can see all those blueberries and the, uh, the other stuff that we added in there. It's all, it's all good. Again, I think that's a success. Our Cheerios texture wise, I think are the best. And I'm not sure if that's because of the Cheerios themselves or because we use chocolate milk, which is quite a bit thicker. That might have helped kind of glue everything together better. But those, uh, those all held together really nice. You can see the chocolate at the bottom and our strawberries. So they all freeze dried well in 20 hours, which is pretty amazing. Um, I think we're going to add this into our regular staple of stuff in the freeze dryer. Uh, let's give it all a taste test though, because I haven't had breakfast yet and I'm starving. All right, which ones should I try first? I'm going to try the Cheerios with chocolate milk. It's really good. The fresh strawberries in there really add a lot of good flavor. I can already tell these are going to be dangerous. Next, I'm going to try this Special K. Man, those are really, really good. This is better than anything you can buy in the store for sure. Just having real unprocessed fruit in there, it just adds bursts of flavor when you take a bite. And man, I could eat this whole tray. They're so good. These two trays are just about as sugary of a cereal as you can get, but they did freeze dry, which is great because a lot of really sugary stuff does not do very well. Um, this was just the straight Fruity Pebbles or generic Fruity Pebbles, uh, just with, uh, I think it was 2% milk. And really that's my least favorite so far because it really just tastes like eating it dry without milk on it. Um, whereas the other stuff, it, it actually added a lot of flavor to it. And I think that this kind of actually diminished the, the sweetness, which is strange. A cinnamon toast crunch with a peanut butter. I was kind of trying to go for like a peanut butter cinnamon toast that you have in the morning. That was really good. But strangely enough, it also makes it less sweet. If you think about when you're done with a bowl of cereal and you have that really sweet milk left at the bottom, uh, that's almost so sweet that you can't tolerate it. You don't get any of that with the bars, um, with either of these actually, which is kind of weird because I thought it would maybe bring out the sweetness more. It, it really tones it down. I really like this. Um, in order of my favorite to least favorite, and this obviously is going to change with everyone, but I would probably just switch these two around like that. And that's favorite to least favorite right there. I can tell you that this stuff is really dangerous. And before you know it, you could consume a whole lot of calories because it just, it's a lot like a lot of freeze dried stuff where it just feels like you're not eating as much as you really are. But let's try and rehydrate some of this like a bowl of cereal. All right, so I think the key to not make this a big mushy mess is to just do this real slow. And you're going to have to try and get it, break it down to its individual ingredients again. Fruity Pebbles did really well. Uh, really, the, I think the key is just to put some water, stir it, keep, keep stirring it real quick. Those even still have some crunch to them. Cheerios did really well. I think the Cheerios will probably end up being the best out of, out of these four for rehydrating this way. Man, the freeze dried strawberries in there, just they add so much. And our cinnamon toast crunch did really well too. Actually, I, I thought that one would definitely turn into mush. And it even has some crunch left. The special K just kind of wants to turn into lumps. This one in this test is the worst, but in the bar form, I would say it's the best. I don't care if it's not in flake form anymore. This is so good, especially with the, the blueberries add a lot to this. Well, that's it for today. Big time winners in my, in my book. I, I liked all of them. I think they all did really well. I think most cereal will do really well. 
And this is definitely going into our rotation of freeze dried food. I think the biggest problem with it is getting it to last uh, long enough to get it into long term food storage because uh, this stuff's going to disappear real quick around here. And speaking of long term food storage, make sure you stay tuned uh, into next week's video. We're going to do some harvest right hacks and I'm going to give you some great tips on how to do some long term food storage. In the meantime, this is retired at 40. Remember to live life simple. We'll catch you next week.